This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic in Arkansas is not as severe as it once was, although there are too many cases still in existence. There are too many deaths that have occurred. But state public health officials are feeling more optimistic. At least that's the take from Dr. Cam Patterson, the chancellor of UAMS. He and I sat down recently for a conversation. Dr. Cam Patterson, always good to have you with us. Thank you for making time. Um, I want to start with a week old tweet of yours. You said you are starting to feel optimistic. UAMS has about um, three fourths fewer COVID patients than you did uh, not too long ago. There are still too many deaths. One hospitalization is still one too many. But tell me, what are you feeling optimistic about? I, I'm feeling optimistic that we have clearly turned the corner on the Omicron surge, which has been the, uh, the hardest surge on our healthcare system here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, you know, we, we uh, continue to see the downward trend. Uh, we were at about 100 patients with COVID uh, six weeks ago. Last week, uh, 26 patients um, in the hospital with COVID-19. Uh, today, 12 patients in the hospital with, with COVID-19. So uh, the tr trends are all going in the right direction. Um, but you know, at the same time, we've had um, almost 11,000 deaths uh, from COVID-19 in, in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of uh, serious stressors to our healthcare systems. Um, and uh, the problem is not completely going away. So uh, we may be starting to see the beginning of the end here, uh, or at least uh, uh, the transition from COVID-19 to uh, an endemic from pandemic situation and, and turning it into a seasonal re respiratory virus, but we're not there yet. Uh, you also said that your teams are predicting that there will likely be continuing surges of new variants, but there's reasons to believe that those surges will become less severe over time. Uh, wh where does that optimism come from? And maybe explain the science or the medicine behind that. Right. Well, you know, I, you know in between um, people who've been exposed to COVID-19, who've been infected with COVID-19, and people who have gotten uh, the vaccine, uh, slightly over half of eligible Arkansans have been uh, vaccinated for COVID-19. Uh, there's enough community protection that uh, it's getting harder and harder for each new strain uh, to uh, create a beachhead here in the state of Arkansas. Now, as long as the virus continues to circulate, it's going to continue to mutate and we'll continue to have new strains. Uh, but hopefully there's enough protection in the community that each successive surge from new strains that, that appear here in Arkansas uh, will be less and less and less. So, you know, it's sort of like a, a wave that ripples down over time. Um, we, we don't know that for sure. We don't have a crystal ball, but uh, our best predictions are suggesting that that's what the future holds for us. Um, are we on the road or will we eventually get to the point where we are treating COVID-19 um, like the annual flu? You're going to go get an annual shot. There will be therapies that can help you if you detect early enough that you have some of the symptoms. Is, is that where we're somewhat headed? I, I think that that's likely to be the case. And, and I think five years from now, COVID-19 will uh, look a whole lot more like um, uh, a seasonal influenza than a succession of surges the way we're seeing it now. Uh, as we get more exposure, um, as we uh, have um, more community protection, and hopefully as we have more people who are vaccinated. Now, you know, the good news, Roby, is that uh, the companies that manufacture vaccines are actually looking to manufacture vaccines that will protect you against COVID-19 influenza and RSV all at the same time. So I can envision uh, a time, uh, hopefully not too far in, in the future, where we get one shot a year and it protects us against all of the seasonal respiratory viruses. I don't think this is an impossible scenario that we could see another worldwide pandemic. It may be a different disease. It may not be a novel coronavirus. It could be something else likely to happen in our lifetime just based on what we've seen over the last two years plus. Do you think that the political division and the, and the different ways that we kind of came at um, attacking this uh, pandemic, do you think we're going to be able to handle a crisis like that better next time? Or do you think that, you know, it's going to be more difficult? Well, you know, we, we've uh, learned some things. So, uh, you know, I do think that we need to uh, reflect on what we've learned uh, about COVID-19 
Roby, you're right. You know, we are going to see uh, a, another pandemic that may be not as bad, as bad, or, or worse than COVID-19 in the future. You know, in the in the past 20 years, we've had several near misses. COVID-19 has been uh, the um, only infection that has turned into a worldwide pandemic, but we've had several near misses. So uh, new viruses pop up periodically, and, uh, you know, it's a roll of the dice whether uh, one turns into a worldwide pandemic or not. I hope that uh, as uh, the heat turns down on COVID-19, we all, every one of us, has a chance to do some reflection and to think about what worked and what didn't work. Um, the, you know, the divides that were created that didn't need to be there um, and how we avoid uh, having that happen in, in the first we're at Roe v is that we didn't do more before the vaccines were available to educate the public about the safety of vaccines. Uh, we're gonna have to do a better job of that before uh, the, the next vaccine comes along so that um, we don't have suspicion and uh, uh, you know, false information uh, about the vaccines influencing what people do next time. Uh, lastly, where are we in the exploration of what some of the long-term effects of COVID-19 may be on the human body? I, mean, I know that it, it will take a while for us to start gathering that data and be able to synthesize some of it there. But, you know, just based on past experiences and what we've done in looking at how other diseases have had long-term effects, where, where do you kind of feel like we are in that spectrum? Well, I think that we're only beginning to learn about the long-term effects of COVID-19. You know, we just learned this week that even mild infection with COVID-19 has a long-term impact on brain function. Um, you know, uh, it's likely that uh, COVID-19 will have effects that last years or potentially even decades of time. So we'll, we'll continue to learn more and more about the adverse long-term impact uh, of COVID-19. Unfortunately, uh, Roby, the, the more we learn, the, the more we find that um, the long-term impact is worse than we thought. So uh, I, I think we'll, you know, even if COVID-19 went away tomorrow, uh, we're going to be dealing with COVID-19 uh, and its impact on the people who've been infected for uh, decades to come. He is Dr. Cam Patterson, Chancellor of UAMS. As always, good to get your take on things. Thanks for making time for us. Great to be here, Robbie.